Saturday night, the Canberra Raiders were at home against the Balmain Tigers. The Raiders, they certainly started the game with a bang, but unfortunately for them, it was the Tigers who stormed home. The Seaford Oval, the Balmain Tigers made it two in a row with the victory over the Raiders. Canberra looked impressive, racing to a 14-2 lead midway through the first half, but fritted away their advantage, trailing 16-14 at the break. David Brooks having just a little more luck with his kick and chase than he did against Canterbury. A try by skipper Wayne Pearce midway through the second half seemed to be the platform for the Tigers' win. Ross Conlon's right boot also came in handy on the night, his seven goals proving the difference between the two sides. Several Canberra supporters were not in thrall with the 16-9 penalty count against the Raiders. And down at the Wollongong showgrounds, the Steelers drew first blood when Ashley Gilbert was able to crash over and Illawarra led 4-0. At the break, the match was deadlocked at 8-all, following this raid from Brett Atkins. He passed to Belcher, and then unloaded to Terry Fay, who went in to score the try. But in the second half, it was a different story. The Steelers went on a try-scoring spree and ran out winners 22 points to 10. At the Seaford Oval, Don Ferner's Canberra Raiders proved their midweek success was no fluke, with their first Premiership win of the season over Cronulla Sutherland. The Raiders scored two first-half tries to lead by 10 points to nil at the break. Big test centre Mal Meninga had a hand in both the tries, scored by O'Sullivan and fullback Gary Belcher. The Sharks did come back in the second half with tries by Carney and Docking, but Canberra always had the buffer and ran out easy winners by 26 points to 12, continuing the Sharks' run of outs at the Seaford Oval. There's the there was a good crowd on hand at Lidcombe Oval, hoping to see the Magpies continue their great form from Wednesday night. And after eight minutes, they weren't disappointed when Wilfred Williams starts a raid, culminating in Ian Schubert scoring. Seven minutes later, Brett Clark puts up the bomb, and Big Rod Petherbridge comes down with it. Fifteen minutes before the break, the Raiders hit back when the ball goes out wide for Terry Fay. Right on half-time, Ian Naden swoops on a loose ball to send Michael Neal over. So at the break, the Magpies are looking good at 14-6. In the trailer's second half, both teams had their opportunities, with West looking the better. But the only points came from this penalty goal for Ian Schubert, giving the Magpies a well-deserved 16 points to 6 victory. Canberra started the scoring after some clever work by half Chris O'Sullivan and prop Gary Coyne. Before hooker, Steve Walters sent Ashley Gilbert racing over under the post. But Penrith badly needing a win hit back. Greg Alexander combined with rangy second rower John Cartwright with the talented ball playing forward, slipping a neat pass to tiny fullback Rob Robards, who just made it to the line. Penrith led 12-6 at the break and got home, yet the try that mattered wasn't really on. A loose pass by Greg Alexander was picked up by Craig Connor. He drew the defence to send David Green in to score, and Penrith bounced back to win 22-16. So let's have a look now at what's happening on the Premiership table in the Winfield Cup. At the sports ground, the Roosters drew first blood when McGahn and Melrose work a wrap around for Steve Keir to score in the corner. The Raiders hit back on the blind side through Paul Elliott and Ashley Gilbert for Chris Skinner to score. East were reduced to 12 men at the 31 minute mark when David Truella gets his marching orders for a high tackle. However, that didn't stop an understrength eastern suburbs from down in Canberra, 27 points to 10. At Seaford Oval, the North Sydney Bears got off to a bright start when winger Les Kiss continued his good form by crossing for his fourth try of the season and when Philip Hayter converted, North's led by six points to nil. But the Raiders hit the lead for the first time in the match about 14 minutes before the break when former test winger Terry Fay raced 80 metres for his try and the Raiders were back in business with an 8-6 lead. Just after half-time, a try by Gary Belcher kicked the Raiders further ahead, sparking a second-half point-scoring spree as the Bears lose their second on the trot by 32 points to 6. Canterbury and, Can uh, and Canberra were the next up. This was a pretty close game, and I think it'll be patently unfair to say that Canterbury have this Sunday's game against uh, Parramatta on their mind and took the wrong mental attitude into their clash with Canberra at Belmore last week. Factually, Canberra scored two tries to one, and had it not been for a particularly stupid lot of penalties conceded within kicking range, well, it could have been a major upset. 14-8 to eight was the scoreline. Two tries to the... Uh, 
Uh, Terry Fay on the right wing, uh, the left wing, I'm sorry, for the Canberra side. Uh, Mitch Brennan was a very sad sight at, uh, at fullback for uh, the Canberra team. Their regular fullback, uh, Belcher, was out. And what a pity it was, because had he been there, they may well have uh, done something in the way of uh, completing that uh, good work that most of their team did on the day. But uh, he wasn't there. Brennan was there. And unfortunately, Brennan looks very much to me as though he's coming towards the end of his career. I say that sadly, because I think that uh, the fellow has been a very, very fine footballer. I remember when he played for South Sydney, he was going around, he was absolutely great. Here he is, he just looks a little bit clumsy, and there he has the ball stolen from him. And uh, Langmax the stealer, the purloiner, the robber. <laughs> he ran it back about 25 yards and scored a try. It's a pretty heartless game, rugby league, isn't it? Once you probably get to the stage where you're, uh, you're going. And there I just caution young Walters, the new hooker that they've got on the Canberra side. Just keep your arms down, son. That's not necessary to go in and belt a man when he's on the ground like that. That's a dumb thing to do. I hope your coach Ferner got right into you over that one. Pretty sad football. Now Sullivan, who must have been, must still be in some sort of consideration for a halfback spot in one of the two city sides. He's a great try, this fella. He never stops going. Another player that I'd like to mention that I wasn't terribly fair to, perhaps by criticising his selection in the Canterbury side uh, a week or so back, and that was Sigsworth. And I, and uh, you know, it's nice to be able to uh, to be able to rectify a situation when uh, you might have been a bit tough on a bloke. Anyway, Terry Fay came back to form in this game. He's a lucky man to be on the football field these days, you know, because he had such a terrible back injury that uh, there was a suggestion that uh, he might uh, end up in a wheelchair at one stage. There he goes in for one of his tries. One, that uh, there was a suggestion that uh, he might uh, end up in a wheelchair at one stage. There he goes in for one of his tries. One of two. They couldn't manage any goal kicking on the day. That was the great misfortune for the, uh, the Canberra side. And uh, Potter. A little bit interfered with, the referee saying no, no, not on that occasion. Back into the end goal area. And Canberra moving the ball out nicely along the line here. And uh, there's, uh, there were some very, very strong performances in this Canberra team. Uh, I, I thought uh, particularly uh, the forwards deserved a lot of recognition for the work that they put in. And here's a nice little move coming up with Bellamy putting a chip kick through. Carey gets his foot to it. Faye plays soccer with it, kicks it into the end goal. And they've come up with their second try. Well, that was a good performance for them. Okay, 14 points to 8 nonetheless. Uh, a couple of things out of the game. A very good tap move instituted. Watch this one. A very careful bit of work and obviously a lot of planning gone into it. Bugden onto Folks, onto Lamb, and then back to Potter. And they breach the line and it takes a damn good tackle from uh, Brennan to uh, stop him. Now, actually, you know, Brennan was uh, Johnny on the spot there, so we've given him a bit of a break earlier. I'm happy to compliment him there. The next incident is to do with uh, Gillespie after a good bit of a football here. Uh, and the uh, this Carey comes through with a full dive. I had the wrong incident there in my mind. This one was a beautiful catch by Carey after the ball had been put through by Bellamy. It's not often you see a fellow dive full length to catch the football. And that was, I thought, very, very good indeed. And uh, the player that I selected in my... Uh, oh, here's another one, the Gillespie run that I was referring to. Now, Gillespie finally gets into the clear after Sigsworth did a nice weave through the middle, gets it to to uh, Bugden and then on to Gillespie and he goes within three yards of scoring what would have been a very, very good try. And I've put in this uh, Ferguson run just to show that this fellow is being uh, absolutely wasted out in the Canberra wing. The play is not going to him at all. It's astonishing how well, on any occasion that he touches the ball these days it has to be as a result of him coming into a dummy half situation and running from there through all the the heavy defence. And I, that's the, one of the reasons I think he's deserving of a run. He's still one of the fastest players around. Now, sadly, the, the business of Mitch Brennan and uh, whether, you know, he's got the ability to play first grade football again. It doesn't show much evasive qualities here. Uh, you'll see he gets a little bit clumsy in some of these areas. He doesn't appear to be able to, to breach the defence. He's caught very quickly. Am I being too hard on him? Well, I don't know. Perhaps I may be. Uh, there he was not able to get his kick away. Uh, there, this one is the one you've already seen. He has the ball stolen from him. And, uh, you know, a try from that sort of thing is awful. Here's another terrible mishmash where he can't field the ball, then gets tackled and drops it. Uh, so it goes on. So, you know, we can cut out of that at any time. It's making me sick to watch it. I don't want to uh, bag him anymore, but I just wonder whether uh, his selection at fullback was a, was a good one. OK, moving on to a very entertaining game, and that was the Balmain-Canberra -Cam game. And what a reversal of form with uh, this Balmain side really having to battle all the way. Very entertaining. 14-12 to Balmain in the fourth quarter. The Raiders were still definitely in it, but panicked under pressure and squandered chances late in the game. Balmain have solved some of their close in defensive problems, but they still haven't got it completely right, as the look on their coach Frank Stanton's face will tell you from time to time.
They're ageing Frank Stanton un murderously, this Balmain team this year. They're so up and down with their form. But let's give credit where credit's due. Canberra really pulled on a great performance in this game. I thought that they were quite, uh, quite outstanding, and they had the winning of the game in the third quarter when it was down to 14-12. Well, uh, they just panicked on a few occasions where there were opportunities. Davidson going in for the first of his two tries. And a bad tackle, by, missed tackle by Hemsley. Uh, Rowan Brennan gets the pass back inside to O'Sullivan. So suddenly Canberra are back in the game. One of the largest flags in, in the world. Cole, uh, Wayne Pierce gets the pass away to Schofield. And Schofield, of course, is a very bright player. And the Balmain fans hadn't seen Myler yet. because He was just a name. Uh, he comes on later and he scores an astonishing try, probably about maybe second or third time he touched the ball in Sydney Rugby League. He only came on for a portion of the, third, of the fourth quarter and it was to be a very important one. Now here's a good quick thinking try from Bridge getting the little kick ahead. The grubber gets the bounce and gives it to Roach and Roach goes in underneath the post. And Roach was quite outstanding in this game, had a very fine game. Conlon gave a fine display for Balmain too in the centre, except that his goal kicking was off. He's only kicked uh, three of his last 12. Meninga picked up a fortuitous bounce on that occasion and was able to use his bulk to stay in the field and score the try. And I think that's his first try for the Canberra side. There's Donny Ferner having a look at things. A couple of the Balmain replacements about to go on. Clever play here from Roach. Lob pass from Conlon. Almost a basketball pass out to Davidson. He goes in for number two. Balmain have always been able to produce good finishes. Very good finishes on the wing. And uh, this bloke, Belcher, have a look at him. If he's not a, a rough chance for uh, the Colin Scott job in the Queensland State of Origin side, I'm a bad judge. He's done this on more than one occasion. He goes very well up the sideline, gets it on to Brennan, and Brennan, uh, unfortunately, just can't get through the tackle there, and the, that movement came to nothing. And here's the Myler try, an astonishing example of the ability to accelerate from a st uh, sort of a static situation. He received the ball virtually standing still, and that was one that brought smiles to the faces of all the, the Balmain fans. So just one more look at uh, that particular thing because I want you to just see uh, exactly how he receives the ball. He's not going very fast, but look at him there when he suddenly lengthens. Now this is the bloke that will be, in my view, the 5'8 for the England side against the Kangaroos later this year. And that, of course, was a very good win to Balmain in the upshot, 20 points to 12, but it was desperately close at 14-12. Coleman. Canberra could only manage four goals to Mal Meninga. And uh, you're going to see a very good try, and I want you to watch the quick hands, the beautiful quick pass from young Coleman here to get Popchi into a gap. Look at that. Now, from the uh, play the ball, they uh, eventually score the try, but that uh, one little pass there can often set up a, uh, a try as it did on that occasion. And Coleman there with a little grubber kick through, and Popchi just gets to it before it goes over the dead ball line, or the touching goal line there, should we say. And quite incredible, you really have to go back to 1971 before you see a first division game with four field goals in a winning team scoreline. Coleman was outstanding for South Sydney. Davidson, a very good prop display. Fennick and Roberts also had good performances for South Sydney. Canberra played OK, but rather unluckily. Uh, Sullivan was their best performer, and this run of his, a magnificent run, only cut short by a magnificent tackle from Bronco Jira, saved a certain try. I think South went into this game determined to blot out that 26-2 disaster against Canterbury before the bye that they had last weekend. And that's a, a result that's going to be on their mind for a long while. I've already mentioned that great tackle by De Jura, and I think it was uh, appropriate that uh, he uh, did that tackle because it was a very, very good performance from him also. So that was the scoreline out there at uh, that game at Seaford Oval, 10-8. Uh, you can't get it much closer than that. Four, and Parramatta 28, Canberra 18. Despite a long injury list and Sterling and Kenny on state of origin duties, the Eels scored first at the Parramatta Stadium. However, the Raiders hit back five minutes before half-time with a length of the field effort started by Gary Belcher and finished by Chris O'Sullivan. Trailing 6-4 at the break, Parramatta regained the lead early in the second half with two quick tries. The second coming after good work from Mick Delroy for Brian Jackson and Parramatta leads 16-6. Then the Raiders hit back with two quick tries of their own through Gary Belcher to take the lead back 18-16. The seesawing affair continued when the Eels crossed for two more tries. The first to Ron Quinn and this one to Tim Barnes giving the Eels a five tries to three advantage and a 28-18 winning scoreline. 
At Seaford Oval, Manly and Canberra turned on a thriller after a clip lines field goal gave Manly a 1-0 lead. Ivan Henjak sliced through after running onto an Ashley Gilbert pass and bullocked his way towards the touchline before unloading to Craig Bellamy. Manly came back strongly, though, with Mal Cochran having a fine game. He continually worried the Canberra defence, and this try to clip lines put Manly back in front. saw in first half the Raiders went to a 10-7 lead after the big prop forward Sam Bacco followed through in a bomb but like they've done so many times this season the Raiders fell away in the final 15 minutes of the game and Manly stormed away to win 25 to 18. On a cold and bleak day at Leichhardt Oval the Raiders drew first blood at the three minute mark when replacement prop Mike Makito made a mess of taking the bomb allowing Ivan Hanjak to pounce on the scraps. But it wasn't long before the Tigers came in from the cold with their first try after a Gary Bridge cutout pass found the strong running Gary Jack. Balmain were running hot just before half time when they scored one of the tries of the season, taking a 10 6 lead to the break. There were four tries in the second half, with Balmain scoring three of them, completing three straight wins for the Tigers with a convincing 26-10 victory, leaving the Raiders languishing at the wrong end of the competition table. At Seaford Oval, the Canberra Raiders were stretched for much of the match against the Illawarra Steelers. Quick hands by Phil Carey and Ivan Hanjak set up this try for fullback Gary Bolcher. Final scoreline, Canberra 26, Illawarra 12. On at Ronson Field, Canberra continued their record of not winning away from Seaford Oval this season. Cronulla's rookie winger, Sean Watson, playing only his third first-grade game since coming from the Riverina this year, had a day he'll always remember. He began with a couple of penalties, then finished off the opening try to give the Sharks a 12-0 half-time lead. Good work by Michael Speechley and Mark McGaw in the second half set up the Sharks' second try. And when Sean Watson duly added the extras, he had a personal points tally of 14 points. Final score, Cronulla 18, Canberra 4. Steep at Oval, the Magpies went in after six minutes when Rod Pethybridge made a 40-metre break before unloading to Lee Crooks, who promptly spilled it. But Wilfred Williams regathered for the four-pointer. Shortly after, though, the paper-thin Western Suburbs defence opened right up. Mal Meninga, who many thought was unlucky not to go to New Zealand, had a big game with the boot and in attack. Seven different Raiders touched down in the match, and at the final whistle, it was a slaughter, 38 to 6. Score there, Canberra 20, Penrith 4. Penrith were no match for Canberra at home. The locals had only one real chance to score when David Lydiard headed for the line, but Phil Carey saved the day with a controversial head-high tackle, which went unnoticed. But from then on, it was all Canberra with fullback Gary Belcher boosting his kangaroo tour hopes. Belcher and Phil Carey did the lead up to send John Chicka Ferguson down on the sideline. Chicka showed flashes of his former self with some help from Phil Carey to put the Raiders ahead eight points to four at the break. The enterprising Raiders went on with it in the second half. Chris O'Sullivan handled twice in starting their next try with big Mal Meninga playing his part along with Gary Belcher. Belcher gave O'Sullivan the final pass for the try, and the Raiders now led 14 points to four. Canberra finished the try scoring after 50 minutes from this scrum. Gary Belcher, the best on the ground, made the break down the blind side before finding big winger Terry Fay on his right. The former test winger bumped off the defence to go on and power over in the corner to complete the upset of the day. Canberra dent the Panthers' semi-final hopes, winning 20 points to four. At Seaford Oval, former Canberra junior Brendan Hall gave Eastern Suburbs an early lead after he picked up a Gary Worth pass. A 40-metre burst from John Ferguson set up the Raiders' second try, which was finished off by prop forward Gary Coyne. It was one-way traffic from then on, with Canberra finally winning by 32 points to eight. The announcement of a 12-team competition for the 1987 Premiership gave Cronulla plenty of incentive to play to the best of their ability at the Sydney Cricket Ground on Monday. Norths, who were thrashed by South last weekend, gave Canberra a drubbing today to remain in contention for fifth spot, with Simon Brockle setting the scene early. The Bears ran in four tries in the first half, with two of them going to Greg Lennon, with this one giving him another opportunity to show off his pace.
North's third try came from a clever crossfield kick, though there's some doubt from this angle as to whether Cannon may have knocked on before he grounded the ball. Replacement Graham Murchie gave Phil Carey the worst bounce of his life as Lennon raced away to give North a match-winning lead at half-time. Murchie capped off a good game with a solo try through a non-existent Raiders defence. At the Seaford Sports Ground, Canberra shocked the Bulldogs by holding them to 14 all at half-time. Canberra scored a surprisingly easy try when Mal Meninga was able to scoop up a spool pass and send Terry Fay across. Canterbury hit back in typical fashion, though, with a sweeping backline movement that saw Terry Lamb backing up to touchdown. Then a clever kick through by Paul Langmack set up Steve O'Brien. Just before halftime, halfback Chris O'Sullivan made an incisive burst for the Raiders and Phil Kerry unloaded to give Terry Fay try number two. The Bulldogs ran away though in the second half to make the final scoreline Canterbury 32, Canberra 14. At Redfern Oval, we had to wait until two minutes into the second half for Neil Baker to break the scoreless deadlock. The Raiders hit back almost immediately with the first try when Gary Belcher propped and came back inside before cutting open the South Sydney defence. And he had too much speed for Coleman and DeJura being able to improve his position. Five minutes later, the Rapidos scored their first and only try, courtesy of a delayed Phil Gould pass for Bronco de Jura. And with Baker kicking three penalty goals, the Rapidos sneaked home 11-6 in a lacklustre match. In favour of Eastern Suburbs, South 23, Manly 18, and Canberra 19, bowled over the Eels 12. Parramatta got a taste of what was to come when in the seventh minute a quick passing movement and a flying John Ferguson put Rowan Brennan in under the post for a 6-0 lead. The Eels came back through the boot of Peter Sterling. Mick Delroy outlept Gary Belcher and just manages to get the ball over the line. And things were looking up for Parramatta when Ashley Gilbert spilt the ball. Brett Kenny was quick to pounce. He turns the ball back inside to big Eric Groth. Groth was unstoppable, bulking some 60 metres to put the visitors ahead 12-6. For the rest of the half, the Eels had the better of the play, but just on half-time, Gilbert made amends for his earlier mistake. Keeping up with Meninga and Belcher, he took the scores to 12-all at the break. John Ferguson had one of his best games of the year. Here he feels a sterling kick shortly after half-time. He dazzled the defence, sprinting 50 metres. Ashley Gilbert showed the pace too to accept the pass for his second try. Malvin Inga booted a field goal with about 12 minutes remaining and the Canberra forwards. Cricket ground scoring after just eight minutes with Glenn Burgess scoring wide out despite a brave effort by John Ferguson to block Michael O'Connor's pass. But seven minutes later, Canberra with nothing to lose took control. From this scrum, Mal Meninga put Craig Bellamy to a gaping hole and he found Gary Belcher on the inside before little Ivan Henjak loomed up to finish off the try against his former club. Canberra now led 6-4. Three minutes later, they were in again. Henjek started it before Rowan Brennan and Gary Belcher handled for John Ferguson to go down the wing. He exchanged passes with Rowan Brennan before scoring the try, and referee Giles O'Donnell was satisfied with Brennan's pass from low down, and Canberra led 12-4. The Raiders were well on top and went further ahead just before half-time. The ball went wide to Meninga, who got his pass away in time to send the runaway express Terry Fay in for his 12th try of the season. And Canberra led 18-4 at the break. Three minutes after play restarted, the Dragons started their fight back. John Fafita made a good bust before lofting a pass to Brian Johnston, and then Michael O'Connor did well before Chris John scored a great St George try, and the Raiders now led 18 points to eight. The desperate Saints tried everything to bridge the gap, 
and it took the brilliance and pace of Steve Lemayne to do it. Steve Funnell started the try with his own kick ahead, and from then on, it was Lemayne against Gary Belcher with the clever Steve Lemayne winning out. But Michael O'Connor couldn't land a goal, and the Raiders led 18 to 12. And then with just two minutes remaining, the Dragons scored their fourth try. Graham Wynn made the break and Steve Robinson did well before John Fafita took the pass to score in a handy position for O'Connor to finally land his only goal from four attempts. But St George bow out for 86 after their 18-all draw. Monday night saw us back at the Belmore Sports Ground for the game between Canterbury Bankstown and the Illawarra Steelers. In the first round, the Bulldogs had hammered the Steelers, but they couldn't afford to be complacent with the semi-final.